My name is Lee Christie. Uh, I'm from MIT. Uh, I'm here today. The name of my talk is Heating Buildings is Stupid. <laughs> you might ask, OK, why would I say something like that? That seems a bit outlandish. But I'm hoping by the end of my talk, you'll agree with me. The idea here was, OK, what can we do to tackle energy issues? And this huge problem I came across was that we actually use a tremendous amount of heat. In fact, we use 14,000 terawatt hours of heat energy per year to heat buildings. That's equivalent to 27 billion light bulbs on all the time year round. It, it's roughly 10 to 14 percent of the world's total energy use. It's staggering numbers. Uh, this, this ends up being around 3.5 billion tons of CO2 greenhouse gases. Or another way of looking at it uh, in dollars is this, is this is $272 billion of energy per year. Uh, this, this is just mind-bogglingly large numbers. And, and it doesn't have to be done this way. It's actually not necessary. Uh, to give you an idea, this is sort of a scope of how big, I'd like to call it, the opportunity is. The scope is this big. On the left is the status quo, 14.4 petawatt hours or 14,400 terawatt hours of, elect of, uh, of heat energy. And then on the right is what could be accomplished with this radical solution that I'm here to propose today. So not only is it heating buildings really wasteful, but it's, it's actually kind of frustrating as well. Have you ever, for example, fought over the thermostat before? I remember doing this as a kid, like I'd turn it up a little bit and then my dad would turn it back down and I'd turn it up and then I'd get smacked or something. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and this is crazy too. How many of you have used these before? Right? Quite a few, right? It, they have them in hotels, they have them in restaurants and they waste so much energy, it's unbelievable. It, literally most of the energy goes straight up <laughs> and, and very little of it actually radiates down to you. Um, and uh, how about this, an, air, an airport at 5 a.m. That entire airport is heated, and there's no one even in it. It's unbelievable. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the history here. How did we get into a situation where we're heating buildings that are empty, or that we're wasting heat in these kinds of ways? Well, it all started with the hearth. Man sought heat. Then came the chimney. The chimney made it so that different rooms inside the building could be heated, and then we got central heating. And once we had central heating, the entire building was set to the same temperature. You heat the air, you heat the walls, you heat the ceiling, you heat the floor. Everything gets heated up and all that energy gets re-radiated out from the building. And if you keep the building at a relatively high temperature like we do for most of our buildings, that, that amount of heat radiation is much larger and, and much more heat is lost. So, why not just you know, use space heaters, for example? We've all used these before. They're electric. You, know, you could use renewable energy with them. The problem with these is that they, the beam spreads out, and it wastes a lot of energy. And not only that, but as soon as you move to the side, it doesn't heat you anymore. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. So here's the crazy solution. Here's the radical solution. Heat people. Heat people. It's so simple. Heat people, not buildings. And how do we do that? Well. We do it with, with this, this device right here. Um, the idea is called local warming, and it's a collimated beam of energy. Think of it as like a, a, a heat spotlight, a heat spotlight that can beam the energy directly at you, just like a fireplace. People might look at this and go, oh, that looks a little bit weird. It looks a bit almost like a, 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 a heat gun or something, or a heat ray. Well, think of it more like a fireplace, but it's targeted at you. So, what, so let's talk a little bit about what has enabled this kind of solution. This is the Microsoft Connect. It's my favorite example of a motion tracking device because it's very low cost and there's millions of them all over the world. So this is the, this is the general idea is that you can have these units that are, that are not just a practical solution but are also architecturally interesting. It sort of changes the way we think about buildings. It blurs the line between indoors and outdoors. So this, we call this the local warming prototype. It was installed in front of Lobby 7 at MIT. That was our first demonstration. Uh, it was a successful demo. And uh, I'm going to show you it right now. So the idea here is that no matter where I move, this thing can track me. I mean, think about it. If you're in a hallway or wherever, this is something that you can do pretty much in any building, indoor or outdoor. So 
So who might like this? Well, building managers and owners, of course, because they have, in many cases, they have a mandate to reduce their carbon footprint of their building. This is one way to do that. Consumers and homeowners could save money on electricity, as well as feel a little bit better about their carbon footprint. And architects and designers have more options to sort of change the way they do things. Some of the challenges, so this is by no means uh, a simple thing, right? Uh, you saw the scope of the opportunity, but this is, these are the very early steps involved in the research. So some of the challenges, for example, is how do you handle a room with lots of people in it? That's difficult. Motion tracking uh, 10 people is fairly difficult, but imagine how hard it is to track thousands of people. Um, the other, uh, you know, maybe privacy concerns. Some, maybe some people don't want to be tracked. How do you track people without invading their privacy? Uh, Low-cost emitters. This device right here, for example, we've got the cost down to somewhere in the order of a, a couple thousand dollars, but how do we drop that cost down to like $100? Uh, reliability and maintenance. These things got to be installed in buildings and outside of buildings. How can we install them and maintain them in a, in a, in a renewable and, and inexpensive way? Um, and then also, of course, the, the grid. If the grid is dirty, then electric, anything you do with electricity is dirty. So how do we get more renewable energy to enable these kinds of things? So here's my vision for 2013. This is, these are some bold statements, um, and obviously it's a little bit like looking into a crystal ball, but let's think about the, the possible future that could be enabled by this kind of technology and this way of thinking. We could maybe cut the CO2 emissions of the world by 50%, uh, sorry, specifically for heat, uh, all the CO2 emissions, that 3.5 billion uh, number that I, that I mentioned earlier. Maybe we can cut that by 50%, or save $120 billion in heating costs per year, uh, maybe you have a world where you have direct control, your own personal thermostat in the palm of your hand via your smartphone to control your temperature no matter where you are in a building. Thank you very much.